What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Comically Boston. Today is episode 109. Today we'll be talking about spoilers for Spider-Man 2. I know a lot of you probably haven't finished the game, so if you don't want to hear spoilers, we'll be talking about that in the second half of today's video. To open up the first half of today's video, we got a little bit of news, and then we're going to be talking about questions from episode 4 of Loki season 2 and what are our thoughts and ideas and theories going into episode 5 of season 2 for Loki and I've been loving that series so far comment below what your thoughts are on Loki hit me up on Twitter all my links down in the description below if you guys want to talk more about Loki season 2 because I've been absolutely head over heels in love with this season speaking about love my boy Mr. Andrew Langone got married over the weekend. He looked great. He was a stud. He <laughs> got some great pictures in. Him sitting there going, hey, yo, Papa, come here. You know, I, I cleaned up pretty nice myself. Um, you know, we had the nice suit. He got us those Jordans for uh, groomsman gifts. Shout out to Langone. That was, that was very classy of him. I think I cleaned up nice, though. Shout out to Bree, my uh, bridesmaid that I had to walk down the aisle with. I think we looked good. I think we killed it. But shout out to him. Shout out to Lexi and Mrs. Langone now and uh, their beautiful daughter Avery because she's a legend. Um, <laughs> but let's move on a little bit. Let's talk about the Celtics. Let's talk about some movies coming up. And so let's talk about some news that happened over the weekend. First up, the Celtics walked the Miami Heat. And, you know, it was only an eight point game. We beat the Heat 119 111. But. Every single one of our starters was in double digits. Porzingis had 17, 9 rebounds, 3 steals. Holiday had 17, 10, and 7 assists. Almost a triple-double. I would like to see those numbers from him all year, and I would be happy. Tatum had 22, 8, and 5. He was plus 13 in his plus-minus scale. You know, so even though he didn't drop 30 like he's supposed to, but the rest of the team got had his back. Brown had 27, 6 rebounds, 2 steals. White had 28, 6 rebounds, 3 blocks. Derek White's a beast. He's 5 for 7 from 3. Like, Derek White might be the most valuable player on the Celtics roster. Not in the league, but just the the output that that man puts out is unbelievable. He's just so freaking good. Obviously, Halloween's tomorrow, so maybe I'll bust out my costume for y'all. No. <laughs> Next week, or... 10 days or 11 days, the Marvels movie comes out. There's a new poster for that movie with the kitties, the Flurkins, if we know. Maybe that's Goose front and center there. Now all the Goose prodigy. Who knows? But the movie I'm really looking forward to coming out on November 10th is David Fincher's The Killer with Michael Fassbender. I have no idea what this movie's about. I think it's just like he's an assassin and he's got to get the job done type of deal. But... I've said it in, in some previous videos, uh, reviewing movies of, with Michael Fassbender in it. He's my favorite part of any movie I've ever seen with him in it. So I think he's going to be an absolute killer in The Killer. So I think it's going to be a great movie, and I can't wait for that. Comment below what you guys are looking forward to coming up in this November and Christmas time. The holiday season's right around the corner. But some other news... Uh, Daredevil Born Again, we had talked about a couple weeks ago, had been shuffled around, you know, episode four, like, we didn't even see Matt in his costume till episode four, and it seems like the writers and directors had been fired on that, but they have a new showrunner, a new head directors, and the showrunner, I believe, is the showrunner for The Punisher Show, which John Bernthal, so that's a good sign for me, I really liked that show, I thought it was really good. And the directors for Moon Knight and Loki Season 2, uh, I'm sorry, I fucking forgot their names, but I think one of them is Morstead, something, something like that. But there's two men, and they did Moon Knight, and they also did Loki Season 2. I think they're the directors for Loki Season 2, Episode 5 and 6 coming up. So, two big episodes coming up, and then they have moving on to Daredevil after that. So, I ain't mad, I really want that Daredevil show to be good. Um, if it's more like the Netflix show, or if it's not like the Netflix show, I don't really care, but Charlie Cox is Dare Daredevil, John Bernthal is the Punisher, if they're both in it, I'll be happy, you know, so, those, those two I thought were very perfectly cast in that role, but, you know, I just want to see those guys now interacting with the MCU and see what that's like, you know, I wouldn't mind 
Charlie Cox and Spider-Man doing something, you know what I mean? Like Daredevil and Spider-Man, him and Tom Holland getting something going. I wouldn't mind that. But let's move on a little bit. Let's talk about Loki episode four. Oof, how brutal was it seeing the, that group of people get smushed in this goddamn box and how messed up it is? You really got to think about it too because when it was just Brad, right? Like he's sitting there and he's he's getting squeezed by glass. But when there's multiple people in this box, the glass is smushing the people into into people. So like once they get really small and small and they're all packed in like little sardines, the last thing these people feel is their flesh upon other people's flesh and screams as they get smushed into nothing. Oh, terrible. I mean, I don't know what's worse, the, the that group of people right there getting smushed to death, or poor Victor Timely getting spaghettified, and like you can see his bones a little bit, and just like this is all his flesh is just now literally strings, and you can see the pain on Jonathan Major's face there, and that scream that he he lets out right before he disintegrates into nothing, Whew. and it almost seems like his astral, you know, his like aura, kind of like just escapes out of the back, like. If you really watch the clip over again, I don't know what's going on there, dude, but I have so many questions. But there's quite a few images we haven't seen yet, so things that are have to come up in the next two episodes, or they end up being like Hulk in that Affinity War trailer. I don't think we've seen Smiling Loki yet. I don't think we've seen this version of Loki, where it looks like he's from maybe season one when he had that collar on, or maybe he gets the collar put on him again in season two, episode five and six, but I don't know. It seems like five and six, he was more working with the TVA. This seems more like season one stuff. So he's getting spaghettified in season one and we're like flashing back to it. I don't know what's happening here, but we haven't seen this yet. And oh, this is a big one, right? So what we saw in Quantumania was Kang in this machine here with this light plugged into it and it was all about that orb, right? The orb that was kind of like the orb that Victor Timely was holding up, right? So it was like a probability orb, and that was what it was all about. That machine that Kang had, was it looks awfully similar to the machine that OB was making, and it also looks awfully similar to the larger version that the looms made out of. You know, so you're telling me it's, it's all connected somehow, like it's all, it all folds into each other somehow, some way. And it's shocking to me that it's that coherent. Cause like, we, so far we've seen, we've, we've seen Kang the Conqueror in Ant-Man Quantumania. Legend. I really loved that part of that movie. You know, even if the movie itself isn't perfect, I thought Jonathan Majors is Kang. And all the Kang stuff we got was amazing. And a lot of the people that are, oh, we got beat by ants. You got to think about it, man. He's in the quantum realm. He's been banished. He's not full powered. And he got beat by not ants. He got beat by ginormous ants that were smarter than we gave them credit for. Ants alone are already geniuses. They work in teams, packs of thousands of them to build little tunnels systems underground and build this giant you know if you ever seen an ant farm that shit's intricate and imagine if they were the size of us you'd be afraid of ants too your ass would lose to ants so like stop underestimating ants stop and us underestimating this kang and i don't think he got beat by scott i think he is he got sucked into that probability thing and who knows what's happening that kang i hope comes back and this season, but maybe he won't. Maybe they're saving him for a movie. But comment below. What do you think the odds are that Kang, the Conqueror, this Kang, shows up in the season finale or episode five? Because we do know that there's th we, we were supposed to get Jonathan Majors for three out of six episodes. We've already gotten him for two. He just spaghettified last episode, and there's two episodes left. So I'm guessing this next episode he's not in, and we're going to be trying to save... Victor Timely are trying to find another Kang variant, or Loki's gonna try and spaghettify himself to go and see what happened to Victor Timely, right? Like, I don't know if Victor Timely died right there, or if he got, like, sent to various points in the timeline, and now he's time-slipping like Loki was time-slipping, right? Because it's all a loop, so things have to, like, kind of fold back in on itself again. 
but I don't know. We've seen Kang, we've seen He Who Remains, and now we've seen Victor Timely for Loki, at least. And these are the, the three variants there. But then in the end of Quantumania, on you know what seems to be an opposing side, we see Immortus, Ramatut, and Scarlet Centaurian, I think we're calling them. But these three Kang variants, will we see these three bastards in the rest of this season? I don't know, but I think my money's mostly on Kang the Conqueror showing back up, but I mean, if he has to show back up, are we going to see these bastards that were in, yeah, uh, you know, the the arena celebrating, or are we going to see this guy? Because I don't know, man. All of the the scenes with the giant egg chair and the things that Kang was doing, like I don't know, there's something about that orb and like you know that first thing that Ka that Victor Timely shows Ob. It reminds me so much of this chair and this this one shot of of Jonathan Major sitting in this chair too. It's like if this is the new big bad, I I do think people are right. He should have probably killed Scott or beat Scott, but I think it's actually scarier that he lost and we don't know if he actually lost. Like we think he lost, but we don't know where he went. You know, so he was banished to the quantum realm. Now he's banished into that orb or whatever the hell happened. I don't know, he's going to be pissed when he's back. <laughs> I'm not going to want to be there when he comes back. But just like, just the suit, the green and the purples with the blue mask. I really hope we find out how he got that scar across the face. Is it because of that helmet and it just like burns into his skin? I don't know, maybe. That's, a, that's an idea at least. We also haven't seen the record shop yet, so maybe this will be next episode. Sylvie has a record above her head and it looks like the record's spaghettifying i don't know maybe this is her getting spaghettified maybe the world's getting spaghettified kind of like um incursions type of deal from multiverse of madness you see like the inky shit of the world like decaying i don't know it's so interesting to me though like where they're heading with this i really hope they stick the landing and it's not a a secret invasion i have very high hopes though because loki has been a, a much better crafted character than the scrolls were and that whole shit. But like, I think they could have done a much better job with Nick Fury. Just, I'm just saying, but I love the dynamic between these two. Uh, Mobius goes, it's got your shape. <laughs> Loki, it's got my shape. It's a fucking miniature doll. It's got my shape. What do you mean? It's got my shape. And Obi's like, it doesn't need to be anyone specific, but they like start bickering. I re I really like, I don't want to see these two ever separate. And when they do end up getting separate or one of them actually dies for good, it's going to be a problem. But also we have two more episodes. If we don't see Loki on a jet ski or uh, Mobius on a jet ski, we revolt. Like, we riot because this motherfucker needs a happy ending because he's been so sad all all this whole time. And I honestly want to see where he is on the timeline. Obviously, he's probably selling jet skis or something, but, like, I want to know if he's happy. I want to know if he has a family. I want to know if he was just, like, that miserable that he actually was okay with going to the TVA. It was a choice. But, like, I want to know how these TVA agents got forcefully dragged into this, to being agents, you know what I mean? Like, how long ago was it, you know? Like, it, it's very interesting. But let's get into Spider-Man 2 spoilers. I've beat the game, it's unbelievable, and I gotta talk about it. Um, one, I love when you open the game up, it always gives you, like, a different little start screen with the two of them. I love the fact that there's two Spider-Men. Mr. Miles Morales is obviously always a beast, but even just playing as Peter, you know, like it feels good to be back as Peter. And this has much more of a Peter story, but it also feels like maybe Peter's retiring by the end of this. We'll talk more about it, but like, I don't know. It kind of seems like Miles is the new Spider-Man. It's like, all right, Miles, you, you, you're it, brother. You do your thing. Uh, but Insomniac Games is developing this, developed this game and is also developing the Wolverine game and they said that the Wolverine game is set in the same universe as Spider-Man 2 so maybe uh, Wolverine's in a bar in New York and Spider-Man shows up and there's a bunch of people cut into pieces that would be cool um, get Spider-Man into a rated R game with this motherfucker because I really want to see Wolverine bloody and cutting people off, dismembering people. Like, there's there's no point in having a Wolverine game with him stabbing people and killing them, and them just being like, "Ooh, I'm going to the hospital. I'm not dead." Like, no, he's got three metal claws on either hand, 
slice people apart. That's what we want. But let's talk about that black suit, man. Some of the image coming out from this game with, you know, just this black suit over the moon. The black suit, oh, just, it, it's always good. The, this kind of, like, recreation of uh, the mirror shot from Spider-Man 3, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, where he's, like, on the mirror. He goes, oh, this feels good. I like it. You know, like, I think this black suit looks better than Tobey's, but I think, honestly, my favorite red Spider-Man suit in this game might be Tobey Maguire's, where in the last game where Tobey's suit was in, I felt like it was a little too purplish, where, like, they didn't capture the blues quite right, and in this game, they fixed it, and he looks a lot better. Um, you know, he's got the web suit. They also have the black web suit. That one looks pretty good, too, but this specific black Venom suit with, like, Venom starting to come out more, you can see him, like, you know, getting more muscly and more, like, angry as he goes on. That game's so good, dude. So freaking good. I thought it was hilarious. Mysterio was Bode Akuna from Jedi Survivor. If you guys didn't catch that, go back and watch. His face is Bode and his voice is Bode. But it's so funny to me that he goes from being a Jedi and the main twist of a game and like this main character of this game and story and then he's M Mysterio. You know, like. <laughs> Uh, you know, what a downgrade for him. He went from being a Jedi in the Star Wars universe to being Mysterio in this, the the, Star, uh, the Marvel Spider-Man universe. <laughs> like, oh, that cracks me up. Uh, those I did think he looked better than at least Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal obviously had a great practical suit, but I thought the helmet with the blue smoke and it was like a skull in there, that looked a little bit more devious. He had like claws, like talons, his fingers. Instead of, you know, just a guy with projections. <laughs> you know, like it felt a little bit better, better than that. But you just go kick his ass and then arrest him anyway. So it's not that big a deal. And he was actually getting framed, so he's really just stupid. Oh, it's funny. It's too funny. <laughs> I don't think we ever actually got this shot, right? The initial trailer that came out a, a couple years ago, I want to say, was uh, the voice of Venom in... You see the two Spider-Man in a street, and then all of a sudden, you hear him creep out of an alley. We are Venom. That uh, that whole part, I don't think, was ever in it. You know, like, seeing Venom like this, this specific shot here, where he's creeping out of the shadows. This was like the teaser shot that they teased this game and teased that Venom was coming. What we really got from Venom was this. <laughs> the shot of him walking through the fire, licking the teeth. Ooh, he has a, a major boss fight with Craven. You thought Craven was going to be the main villain's game? Venom takes that to a no, whole nother fucking T. But I, I will give Craven credit. He cuts off Venom's tongue. That was a great shot. Uh, you know, Venom then has to grow back his tongue real quick and it gets like longer. He starts like really licking shit. But oh man, it was so cool to see Craven being badass and like. It's, it's, I, I still think it's going to be possible and good to see Aaron Taylor Johnson's Craven because Craven for him is going to be this younger version. We're going to see the origins. This is the old Craven. So if this is the end of Craven, I wouldn't even be mad if they give us this as like the adult Craven. You know what I mean? Like if Craven does his movies, does his thing, he attacks Spider Man once or twice, whatever, and then becomes an old man and he's hunting and he's, you know, looking for a worthy opponent to take his life and he finally finds Venom then what does Venom do but bite his goddamn head off and leave him there in the middle of Times Square holy shit guys like it blew my mind I, and Craven was such a badass he stabbed Spider-Man he killed a bunch of villains he killed uh I'm pretty sure off screen he killed like Rhino he killed uh Electro Shocker Vulture it was confirmed that he he killed Scorpion with his own tail, dude. He's a badass. Like he's he's the ultimate badass when in this game. So if imagine this game came out what the twentieth or the sixth or something like that, and or it was, it was yeah I think it was this came out the sixth and then the twentieth um, the original Craven movie was gonna come out but it got pushed back. So imagine like if we were experiencing this Craven and then that Craven came out, I think it would have done terrible. So it was a good idea for them to to switch it up because it's not going to be anywhere close to this. But I, I, I was really a big fan, you know? And then the anti-Venom suit 
you know, the whole uh, Martin Lee side of the story. I, I really didn't want Miles to go and kill Martin Lee. Um, so I'm so I'm glad Miles has that, like, he didn't need anyone to stop him from doing it. He had his own morals that he didn't do it, you know, and he was fighting them. He fought him. We did beat him in a fight, but then we saved his life, you know, and he goes, go find the other Spider-Man. And then the, he gets anti-venom powers from Spider-Man. This was wild. <laughs> the white suit Spider-Man I loved, but the wings, the wings on Venom, all of a sudden he starts flying with these giant bat wings. I was like, what the fuck is happening right now? I was, I was shocked, but I thought it was cool as hell. And then a lot of people are hating on Miles' suit with the blue, with the hair coming out. I don't love the mask. I don't love the hair coming out. They could, should have thrown the hood on or something. But like in game, it, it doesn't look that bad with the electricity flowing through the blue of the suit. But I, I will agree that in pictures, this suit looks awful. They could have done a, a lot better suit to go alongside this beautiful white suit. Um, I don't know. It's not my favorite Miles suit in the game. I have a few Miles suits that I really like. The, the Just the clean black with the red. You know, there's a couple that are really cool. There's a couple Venom ones. Like, there's like a crate, like a, you know, Age of Darkness or something. And you can be like uh, Carnage or Venom like suit but your miles it, it's pretty cool uh but you know in this next game what will happen because I, I think we beat venom i don't think we does he live by the end of this game i literally just finished it the other day and now i'm blanking on it i want to say venom's dead harry's dead Now I gotta go replay it again. God damn it. I, I want to say he's God. I, I want to say they beat him. Um, and Peter is anti-Venom now. So he has like the, the same Venom powers like that you have the whole game. But now they're white. And you have the white suit. So I, I don't mind that. But the, there's some crazy side missions. Right? There's a side mission called The Flame with Yuri. And, and they're hunting down this guy. And it finally comes out that he's like, yeah, I gotta go hide underground. One of my aliases. And he says Cletus Cassidy. And then he looks down and he's got a symbiote that's black in a tube. And then it turns red. And you're and he goes, and he's like, there should be carnage. You know, and you're like, oh. You're like, dude, I just watched Let There Be Carnage the other day. If this was the reveal of carnage in that movie, it would have been so much better. But I'm thinking there's got to be a DLC for this game. Because once I finished it, it still felt like there was shit to do. But there wasn't, like, things to do. There wasn't, like, waypoints to go to. So it was just kind of like you're just swinging around, flying around. I will say the movement feels perfect in the game, but there's going to be either a DLC for Carnage or the next game's going to have that Carnage storyline. Um, there was also a post credit scene where we see Norman Osborn talk about the G-Serum. So are we going to get Green Goblin looking like this next next time? Will he be that giant goblin from the Cross the Spider-Verse or, or uh, Into the Spider-Verse? I kind of want my goblin looking more like this or more like, you know, Willem Dafoe from Spider-Man one i did like that suit a lot of people didn't but i do kind of want him old classic you know with the big swooping headpiece and the <laughs> goblin ears and the green and purple i think that would look cool uh and then there's two other scenes that blew my mind one of them uh norman osborne goes to the uh, probably the raft and you see otto octavius is in prison writing and he's like what are you writing he's like my plan you right so now Otto's coming back again to be the main villain in the next one but what he's gonna put together a new sinister six and really come after spider-man this time because now he's pissed now he's had time to think about all the wrongs that peter did to him and now he knows it's peter you know so it's a problem you know that's a problem we're gonna have to kill Otto or something because he's gonna want to kill us but then the last one you go around and you find every single one of those spider bots and then it gives you a cutscene, right? Like a, a mission, but it's more like a cutscene. And you go and you find this location in a portal that's shaped like a hexagon, opens up on a wall and you see this bartender behind the bar. And she's like, 
uh, that spider bot tech, I should really take it off your hands. And she kind of like opens a briefcase and all the spider bots that you had collected get sucked out of Peter and into this briefcase. She shuts it and goes, yeah, and if Miguel asks for these, tell him, you know, you didn't see me. And then the portal closes and he's, and you're like, Miguel, but if you know from us, that's the same portals and Miguel O'Hara is Oscar Isaac character from Across the Spider-Verse. So now they're tying the game into Across the Spider-Verse. So you're telling me we could get multiversal Spider-Man in this next game? Like, because we do know that that Spider-Man from Spider-Man 1 was Yuri and he was in uh, Across the Spider-Verse in, in one of those little time boxes. But like, what is this next game going to be? Carnage? I really want Venom to come back. We only got to play as Venom for like a quick second. But, oh, it's, it's so much fun. I got to play this game again. Because grabbing people as Venom, I think it's like R1. You could grab people and then R1 again. You could throw them. So that's all I did. I just ran up to people grabbing them, throwing them. Grabbing them, throwing them. And you throw them into another villain. So you're literally grabbing somebody, taking somebody else out at a distance. And then, like, if there's no distance targets, you could grab and then smash the guy into other people. I just felt like Hulk. I was like, ah, oh, puny god. <laughs> it was too much fun, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please go play Spider-Man. Comment below what do you think about it. What do you think about Loki Season 2? Oh, episode 5 right around the corner. Stay tuned for Friday. We'll be talking, we'll be breaking that down, reacting to episode 5 of Loki. We got more movie reviews coming your way this week. We got 2021 Marvel movies. We got Shang-Chi, Let There Be Carnage, Eternals, No Way Home, all coming your way this week. And then next up on my watch list is 2022 Marvel movies, Multiverse of Madness, Thor, Love and Thunder, Morbius, not Mobius, Morbius, Wakanda Forever. So we're back into the phase four, heading into phase five. I'm hyped to be almost caught up again. We're going to be pretty much all the way caught up by the time Loki season finale comes out. Then we're going we're gonna to go watch the new Marvel movie, The Marvels. I'm going to be so hyped. And then after we're done with all the Marvel stuff, it will be Christmas time. And then I'll be diving into some Christmas movies. I still haven't really dove into a whole bunch of Halloween movies the way I wanted to, but I've been real busy this month, so comment below some Halloween recommendations for me. I really gotta, you know, it's tomorrow. Might as well spend tonight and tomorrow so watching some Halloween stuff, huh? So, comment those below. Follow me on my other Instagrams. If you have any questions or things you want to send my way, email comicallyboston at gmail.com, and I will see you beautiful people in the next video. Peace.